Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Agape Community Fellowship, where Bishop Apostle Ken Smith is our overseer. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer before we bring the word. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Father, for allowing us to be in your presence yet another day, Father. Lord, we thank you for your mercy, your love, and your grace that you have shown on us. Father, we pray, Lord, that you will have your way today in this service, Father. Lord, that souls will be healed, delivered, and set free on today. Father, we pray over the speaker on today, Father, Lord, that you will bless them, Father, that they will hear from on high, Lord, and bring the rainbow word that you would have for your people on today. We thank you and we praise you, Father, for all that you're doing for us. And Father, those making their way into the house on today, Lord, and our viewing audience also, Lord, we pray, Father, that you will touch their hearts and minds to receive what you would have for us on today. We thank you and we praise you, Father, and all that you do, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 And at this time, we will bring our own Apostle Kim Smith. Amen. Let's receive him with a hearty praise. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say 
in time. time. Amen. I'm not going to be up here long, but at the same time, I need a little time. And so I want you to see some things in the Word. It's things that you're familiar with. But I believe the Father is speaking to us. Amen? Amen? And so again, we just thank the Lord for what He's doing and what He's about to do in and through us. We thank the Lord that His Word will not return to Him void. And so it will accomplish the thing that He says to do. And so I thank God for how He's going to use you to promote you, to take you to new places in and through Him and through His Word. And so we give God the glory for yet what is going to take place. In Genesis chapter 37, uh, if you're familiar with this, there's a fellow by the name of Joseph. Somebody say Joseph. Joseph. And Joseph is somebody that we can all kind of relate to uh, with regard to some of the things that transpires with him, uh, if you will. I like I liken it in this fashion that Joseph is a guy that we're going to get a chance to see. Joseph gets what I call preferential treatment. Somebody say preferential treatment. Oh, come on, man. you got to talk to me a little better than that. Don't you like favor? Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Does anybody here like favor? Yes. Now, I just talked to myself. I like to get a little favor, glory yes. to God. You know, yes, yes. sometimes I like for things to go in my favor. Uh, Joseph is a guy that he's getting preferential treatment. Tell your neighbor, God is going to give you preferential treatment. Oh, yes. God is yeah. giving you preferential treatment. Thank man, you see, how you, see how you smile? So, so brightly with that. But one of the things you've got to understand that even when you're extended preferential treatment, not everybody's excited about it. One of the things about preferential treatment, there are some people that will say it's unfair. There's some things about preferential treatment that even when you're getting the treatment, you don't understand that you're getting it. And so in the context of receiving it, you yourself may be bothered. Must be in the wrong house. But I want you, I want you to see that Joseph was receiving preferential treatment. And in it, in it and through it, uh, the course of God and man, God is using some things in your life that you may not understand is preferential. Well, why is that? Why do you say preferential? It's, it's, it's something that's been set aside solely for you. There's something that's being set in a situation to make things better for you. Tell somebody, my character and my conduct must come in accordance to what the Spirit of God would desire. It is by design, it is by design, and I need to take a little time, all right? Take a little time. Um, it is by design that some things that God does, the way he does it, is not going to be the way you think it should be, but it's preferential treatment just for you. Amen? Amen. Uh, and so in Genesis chapter 37, just kind of read with me, going into... Um, Going into verse 2. There are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilat and with the sons of Zippi. And his father's wives and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Somebody say, he was a tattletale. <laughs> come on, come on. Just, just admit it. Joseph was a snitch. Come on, tell it. Just be real. Joseph was a snitch. Come on. You, 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 come on now. Can I be real with you? And you know, some of you know what it's like to have one in your family. You got one in your family that, that likes to tell what everybody else is doing. Glory to God. Now, I have a different approach to it, Pastor Ron, because I probably would have been the guy that they called the snitch. Because if you did it, you needed to be reported because it might come back at me. Glory to God. But, but Joseph was that guy that literally, he, the Bible says, he brought an evil report so that he had to put a little spin on it, a little twist on it. Is that all right? You got to understand, Joseph, you know, didn't like certain things. He was getting preferential treatment. And because of it, he was standing out a little different, even to his brothers. But can I just say this? If you the snitch, anybody here know you the snitch? <laughs> Glory to God. I, I, like to, I like to tell people this, that it's not really, it's not really snitching. You know, but they have what is called, uh, we tip. You, you, anybody heard that? We tip. And so I believe that I was one of those that just liked to tip. Glory to <laughs> God. But Joseph, Joseph brought an evil report. And it's important that we see this because it's not just seeing Joseph. It's also seeing some things in us. Yes. Can I be real with you? Yeah. Part of the, the sense of your character and now, ultimately, your conduct, there are some things that God is going to have to do to bring you to the place, to change some things, even in this hour. 
to change you into the man or woman that God is calling for, or that you can stand in accordance to the spirit of the living God. And so we see Joseph. Joseph brought an evil report. He, he, he was designed, and at that point it was his heart to go and tell them his brothers. But not just tell them, he knew that because of a report that his father had with him, it was obvious that his father loved him more than he did his brothers. It was obvious to Joseph that the father had a liking to him that his brothers didn't have. And because of it, he kind of used it to his advantage. Come on now, just be real for a second. Some of you have used it to your advantage, well, you know, because of how your parents would listen to your cry more than they did anybody else. And so you would holler a little louder. Am I in the right house yet? Some people would go and do certain things because they knew that someone was going to pay attention to it. Joseph had taken advantage of this, and he was calling for, if you will, an evil report. Why are you bringing this up? Because I want to bring this to the point, I bring this to light again. Tell somebody, I'm getting preferential treatment. I'm getting preferential treatment. And so he brought to his father an evil report. Now Israel, here, here we get the information, Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. Why did he do this? Because his son, he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. He, you know, he loved Joseph so much, he, he, he gave him something to kind of make it stand out. Now, you know, come on, let's be real. Uh, if, if everybody in your family is getting the same thing, you don't mind. But if you get something and I don't get the same thing, I'm a little annoyed by that. Come on, anybody ever get jealous because somebody else got, you know, I've even watched some people would, when, you know, birthdays come along in a family. You know, it's funny because when they get something on their birthday, you think you're supposed to get something too. <laughs> you have to, no, really, you have to prepare children sometimes because they, they, it just bothers them simply because it was somebody else's day. They don't want that, that they... Why did they get to shine? We had your day yesterday, but, but why did they get to shine all by themselves? It's just a mindset that we have. And there's some things that we have to understand that God's going to have to deal with in all of us. Can I be real with you? There's some things that if we're honest, if we're honest, you, you, you know, we're, we're looking at ourselves like we're adults, man. We don't have those problems. We don't do that anymore. But it, it, I said, no, look. We get upset if somebody gets promoted on the job. I do the same thing they did. I don't know why they would get promoted and not me. You know, there's things we look at. Well, they just get in preferential treatment. Well, it may be those things. You know what I mean? We, we just got to be honest. There's some things in us that are going to have to be dealt with before we get to the next place. Right. Amen. Can I just tell you this? I want you to see some things that you may not understand. The intent of God is so great. What God is going to do in each of our lives is so unique and so different. He's already, tell somebody he's already got it figured out. What's the next move? There's some people that God's getting ready to bring into your life. Some of them are going to help you grow. Well, in the process of them helping you grow, they may not be the people you like. Some of the people that God is getting ready to bring forth into your life because he has to deal with your character. Yes. Just tell your neighbor, you're getting preferential treatment. Mm -hmm. Woo! Why did they, why did they have to have these people in a... There are people that are getting ready to come, or they may already be there, that they're there because of the preferential treatment that God's doing for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now they say, thank you, Lord. But the whole time he's saying, get me under this, Lord. <laughs> So here's Joseph. You can see Joseph. You can understand things. When you get to see it, we get to see behind the scenes. We get to see in the midst. We get to see the story unfold. And so because of it, we can understand things that you and I don't normally see. There's things that have happened in your life and are happening in your life you may not like. But I want to tell you, it's working for your favor. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Man, y'all got quiet with that one. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> look at this. Look at this. And so the father had made his son a coat of many colors. Why did he do this? Because of preferential treatment. Because he's already extended to us that he loved him more than he loved the others. Well, what a, the, the other side of it, we, we know for a fact he loved the, that, that boy's mother more than he did the other mother. Come on, in our house. Yeah. In our house. Yeah. It was that love that drew him. Now, now. Our parents, as parents, we love to say, we don't have favorites. Come on now. 
Come on, haven't you told your children, I don't have favorites? Hmm. Yes. And I love it because the children like to tell their parents, I'm your favorite. Mm -hmm. Glory to God, is that right? Mm -hmm. There's always someone that's going to tell you, I'm the favorite. I'm the favorite. Yeah. But you know, I love it. I love it if we're honest and we're open. Some of us, sometimes, we, we want to be the favorite. In our house? Yeah. Glory to God. Well, Joseph recognized his unique position. Can I ask you this morning, have you re recognized your unique position in God? Have you recognized that God's extended to you favor? God's called you to a place. We like to call it the fog. Anybody walking in the favor of God? Amen. Anybody in that place that God has already extended preferential treatment to you? Amen. If that's the case, somebody's looking at you. And they're upset, they're envying, they're, they are bothered because of what God's doing with you. So well, why do you deserve it more than I do? Can I tell you one of the things that I want you to understand? God is dealing with Joseph, he's about to deal with Joseph in ways that you can't even imagine. Can I just go in, inside somebody and say, let's a special report. Let's do an inside special report on Joseph. Let's look at some things about Joseph. Some things we can conclusively understand about Joseph. Joseph is accustomed, if you say he's, he's given a bad report, Joseph is accustomed to, let's say, embellishing his stories. Joseph is accustomed to kind of building some things up, maybe adding and or taking away. Joseph is used to and accustomed to kind of, Pastor Thelma, can I use the word fabricating? <laughs> can I say that Joseph likes to kind of just take and put a little color to his story. But but usually the spin that Joseph puts on his, his stories are usually the ones that kind of make you look bad and him look good. Can I tell you that Joseph has some problems in his character? Look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, do you have a character flaw? If you have a character flaw, one of the things that God has, has to do for you with your preferential treatment, and tell somebody what preferential treatment is. He's going to help us work on our character. That's right. Because as long as the character flaws exist, mm -hmm. your conduct, tell somebody I'll keep lying. Oh, shouldn't use that word. We, we, we couldn't say it lying. But, but I'll keep fabricating. I'll keep putting the spins on my stories. Has anybody here ever been to the place where you, you kind of told a story and, and when you told it, 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 it got so colorful? <laughs> it made you wonder about the story. <laughs> you ever shared a story that, that you yourself, you know, I, I'll tell you like this, I, I work with with a guy and he, he came in one day and I noticed that he had had a black eye and a couple other bruises. And he told me, I said, man, what happened to you? He said, man, Kenny, I'll tell you like this. I was in a fight and it was two Marines attacking me. Two Marines and I fought them off. And so later on somebody said, man, what happened? He said, well, I'm going to tell you. It was two Marines and an Air Force person came up. I had to fight them off. Before the day was over, 10 people had attacked him and he beat them all down. I said, my God, that story just it became more colorful. And he became stronger and bigger in life. And I had to ask him. He told me, he said, well, well you know, sometimes you've got to let them get a little something. Let them get a little. <laughs> well, I found that sometimes the character of us, it needs to be, some things need to be worked out. Can you imagine what it would be like if you witnessed something and you, your character skills were not quite right? Can you imagine having a job where you had to work with money? <sighs> Glory to God. And you saw the money when it failed. And you deposit, you know, just deposit in, in your bank account a few extra dollars. You saw them drop about $300. You picked it up. It was inside the store. You saw who it came from. But it was okay. Character falls. There were some things in Joseph 
that are just like us. And because of it, where God is calling you to, the purpose that God has for your life, there's some things he's going to bring in your life to deal with your character because of the conduct. I don't like that. Come on, come on, tell somebody I like the end when God speaks, where he tells us what we're going to do and how he's going to use us for his glory and how great we're going to be. Tell somebody I love that. Isn't that the part we like? Well, let's look at Joseph. And when the, father, when the brother saw that, that the father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him. And they, they couldn't even speak peaceably regarding him. They, they didn't have anything good to say. They, 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 they were in a place that it was like they were already disturbed and bothered by Joseph. Well, why were they disturbed and bothered? Because of what the father's preferential treatment to him. They didn't like the fact that he also embellished his stories regarding them. And then Joseph came and he said unto them, Tell somebody, you know, you got to get this part. We love a happy ending. Come on, come on. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. Don't you love those, those uh, fairy tales that happily ever happen? Yeah. You know, I question some of them, but that's another story. You know, um, but don't you love a happy ever after? You know, don't you like to see those, you know, movies where, you know, in the end, everybody's going to come together and everything's going to be grand and great? Yes. Right? Come on. Yes. We love the happy endings. I do. And it's kind of unsettling. You know, it's kind of unsettling when they give you a story and they don't give you the end of it. Mm. Kind of leave it open. Mm. And, and you're bothered. Like, I don't like that. They didn't let us know what was going on. How do we know what happened? It bothers us. Right. You know, it's interesting to know, tell somebody in your life, God has spoken. And he told you where you were going. You know, what's interesting about God is while you're in the midst of whatever's happening in your life, God is already speaking to you about some things that are to come. Amen. Amen. At, probably at your worst point where you feel like I can't go any further, I don't know what I'm going to do, it just feels like everything's falling down, it's falling off. You ever feel like you're going over the end of the earth? <sighs> just feel like everything in your life has not, it's not producing, it's not coming together, nothing is working. Anybody been there? I don't know how I'll see tomorrow. You ever, you ever been there? Like, like, you know, you just feel like life is ending right now. And you take to your bed. And that's another story. But you ever been to that place where you just feel like, man, this, it, life is, is just, oh, there's nothing to even look for. Life seems hopeless and helpless. It's just, you wonder even to the point, why were you ever born? Anybody ever been there? <laughs> why me? God, why did you give me life? Because of all the troubles and difficulties I'm experiencing, why am I even here? Mm -hmm. Anybody been there? Yes. And I want to tell you, it's usually in those places that God is speaking. Many times God has already spoken before you hit that place. Before you hit that place where everything seems like it turns upside down, God has already spoken. And he tells you things like be encouraged. He will tell you that he starts talking to you as though everything's all right. Everything's going to work out. He doesn't give you all the details, but he tells you some things. Anybody got some of that? Yes, yes. I want to tell you, if you've been in that place, tell somebody you were getting preferential treatment. It's just a reminder, you were getting preferential treatment. God was speaking to you at a point probably when nobody else was. Nobody else would. Nobody would come near you. You ever been in that place you just feel like you're all alone? Nobody wants anything to do with you. <sighs> come on now. You know, back in the day, you know, we, we, we would call it like this when we were younger. You know, uh, girls had cooties. <laughs> I don't know what they are. I don't know what they look like. But you don't want you don't want to be touched. You don't want to be touched by them. You know, else? But life brought brought some changes and now you know you don't mind getting the cooties. But <laughs> having stated that, one of the things you gotta understand. There was a point when there were people that, that you looked at that you didn't want to look, you didn't want to be, be around them, want anything to do with them. You might have been that person that everybody shunned. Everybody pushed to the side. But I want to tell you that no matter where you're at, God is still speaking. Can this be like that? And one of the things that I want you to understand is that God speaks at the most profound times in our lives to tell us, Brother Darrell, 
This is not it. It's not over. There's still more to come. And he keeps talking in a way almost like it's a past tense. Pastor, he keeps letting us know that there's more to come. I May mean, not give you all the details, give you all the insight. And Joseph, being the guy that he was, God spoke to him. God gave him a dream. That when Joseph would go to sleep, somebody said, When you go to sleep, man, God speaks. And he would speak to God. Did the Lord ever speak to anybody when they sleep? Yes. I, I think it's awesome, man, that, that the Spirit of God would speak to you through, through dreams. Amen. My dreams always consist of things like Batman, Superman, me being the Flash. Um, <laughs> Pastor, I have dreams like, like that. You know, I can attribute to the popcorn or whatever it was I was eating. I know God's not in it. And so, but I think it's awesome how God ministers to us in different ways. I think it's awesome when God ministers to you in the midst of a dream. That even while you're laying down, resting, God is speaking into your spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And it would almost be the point where it's like, man, God, why I can't get that? That's not for me. Mm -hmm. That's not my particular thing. He has given me a dream or two. You know, I know it was him. It wasn't mine. Most because I told you what most of mine, you know, you can see me. I can run it, uh, you know, 600 miles an hour plus. But... <laughs> But when it's God, it's something different, it's something unique. God spoke to Joseph via dreams. And the reason I say it's important that you know, it's preferential. God chose to do that for him. There was a reason why God spoke to Joseph the dreams. Well, for each of us, God shows a preferential treatment, a favor to each of us in the way he ministers to us. Some of us, because of who we are, you know, God deals with us with specific details. Anybody here detail oriented? Yes. Yes. Very detail oriented. So, so I'm, I'm sure if in a dream God is showing you things that may not be interesting to anybody else. Let me tell you like this: If I went out to cut the grass, I don't care if one blade is higher than the other. Now, if I'm getting a haircut, I sure don't want hair sticking up all over the place. Come on, right house. There's some things that just don't really stand out. But in this dream, Joseph dreams, as God speaks to him, there are things that he wanted him to specifically pay, pay attention to. God brought out details. Now, he said, well, why, why is this? Because I want to tell you something. One of the things that God is going to deal with Joseph, it has to do with specifics. Whew. Detailed. He was going to be detail-oriented. He was going to have to pay attention to things that others wouldn't have to. But God spoke to him in his dream. And this, I'm sure this is all familiar to you, what's taking place with Joseph. But it's all about the sense of our character. It's all about the sense of where you and I are standing today. You may not understand it, but God is offering to you preferential treatment because of where he's taking you. But in the context, in the same context, there's some things, Sister Timmy, he has to deal with us in terms of our character to bring forth the right move forward the right conduct. And so having stated that, Joseph, he begins to tell Joseph something that really infuriates his brothers. Whew. Now think about this. Have you ever thought about this? Why didn't God give him a dream that would kind of like make the brothers feel a little better about themselves? It's not how it works always. It was really a personal matter. It wasn't intended for Joseph to share it. It wasn't intended for Joseph to share, and the brothers obviously, I want to tell you something, obviously when God spoke it to him, um, God didn't intend for Joseph to go and share with his brothers. It was for Joseph. Anybody here got something that God's given you that you want to share with everybody? It would seem that, Pastor Nita, that we just want to share. God gave me this, I want to share. You got to know what God wants you to share. This really wasn't for the brothers. It's important to know that God told him, and the brothers were, were able to, to see some things in the dream that bothered him. Because Joseph began to tell him I dreamed, and when I dreamed, I saw, you know, basically what he's telling them is that I saw you bowing down to me. Well, for you to bow down, that, that, that considered that Joseph would come into a place that he was going to be royalty. It was brought to a place that, that, that Joseph was going to have things that was over and above anything. He said, I saw you coming to me. And of course, you can see how God brings it together. What I want you to understand, what you may not have thought about, when you stop and pause, somebody put this on pause for a second. Do you know what it's like for God to speak something to you 
and it's being orchestrated. Everything that's happening from that point forward is bringing you to ultimately to the point where you're destined, what you're destined for and your destiny are going to be. So that means that everything that's happening to this point, from the moment God speaks to you, everything's working for your favor. Come on, pause. Well, just pause for a second. How many of you have been going through some things that you don't like? And God spoke something to you. And yet when God spoke it, you were still in the midst of pain, agony, discomfort. You were in a place that you didn't like. God was speaking to you. Tell somebody from that moment forth, from the moment God speaks, you are on a collision course with destiny. From the moment God speaks, Pastor it's just by design, there are people and places that you and I have to go. That's right. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, I love this. <laughs> and we'll pause and pray over the spirit of blind. <laughs> Can I be real with you? We don't stop and really think, how does it all work together? We see what transpires with Joseph. But can I tell you, you're going through some stations that you may not like. Your train is going to pull in some places that you don't want to go. But God said, it's because of the preferential frame that I've given you. He speaks to Joseph. He tells him how his brothers are going to bow down to him. He goes and tells his brothers. Ultimately, he has it a second time. Man, you know, it's something. When God really wants you to hear it, tell somebody God is likes details. He's specific, and he loves details. So God will speak a thing to you once, and I don't know about you. Can I just say something to you, Pastor Nita? I had a tendency sometimes, you know, my wife will say, hey, if you go outside, will you do, she'll give me three things to do. And on that list of three, I heard two. And I come back with the two that I heard. Truth be, I forgot the third. Sometimes if you repeat it to me, I'll get them all three. Can I tell you, God will sometimes... Give you that thing over and over again because he does not want you to forget what he's telling you. Amen. Yeah. Some of you are in this place right now and you don't understand it. God's just reminding you what he's already said he was going to do. Well, God, why do I have to go through this? Why do I have to hear it again? It's necessary, Pastor Donald, because sometimes we get frustrated. Anybody get frustrated? Yes. You ever get frustrated over the time that it's taking? You ever get frustrated yes. because, because it's just not moving the way you thought it was? Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And by that same token, is anybody trying to help God in the midst? <laughs> you know how God told you he was going to, to do certain things, how he was going to cause you to prosper. And so you decided, well, since it's taking so long, God, I'll just go to the model. <laughs> model got real big, so they spent $100. Now you're just further in debt. And then you blame God. No, leave that alone. Glory to God. But here's, here's this thing. Sometimes we try to help the Lord. He is not looking for your help. He's trying to get you to hear. Amen. If you'll hear what the Father is speaking, remember, just tell you, just nudge somebody. Tell them preferential treatment. Preferential treatment. Why has it been so hard for you? Why has it been so difficult? Why did you have to go through a road and down a particular path that no one else had to go through? Can I tell you, God is also working on your character. So that your conduct will be becoming the thing that he's calling for in you. Right. That ultimately that you would glorify the Father. When you're brought into the place, the time, the time that you're called to shine for him. Not that you might shine, but that he might shine forth through you. Can I just be real with you? Joseph has no idea what's taking place. Joseph does not know what's inside of him. Can I say to you, there are many of you that are Joseph. There are many Josephs that are in this room. Many that don't know who they are. And although God has co-signed it with a dream, with a promise, you still don't recognize who you are. And so though you've heard it over and over again, you're still walking in a place of complaint, misunderstanding. You're still upset. 
Can I just say it like this? You're still full and you don't know what you're full of. <laughs> Joseph had pride. Joseph had pride. Can you imagine this? Joseph is going to be brought to a place ultimately where he's going to be over everything. But if he would have had pride in that place, there was a whole lot of people that would have went without him. Can I be real with you? If God was to bless some of you the way you're asking God to bless you, you would suddenly be in a place where you'd just be some people you'd snub. You would look beside them, look down on them. Pastor, I remember a time... You know, I listened to someone talk about they have, were having car difficulties. And they, you know, they, they mentioned how people had passed them up in their journey. They said, I can't wait till God bless me with a car. Wait till I see them out there. Well, as long as you like that, you're not ready for the blessing. That's right. So there's some things that God is doing in us, not just in one, but in all of us through the preferential treatment that he's bringing forth. Wow. Can I tell you this? This is bigger than us. Joseph doesn't even know what he's speaking. He doesn't even know what he's saying. When he opens up and he tells his father, you know, somebody has enough, how you say, wisdom to know. Can I say this? When the father heard this, he said, that even you said that even me and your mom, you're going to be in a place of royalty. You're going to be in a place that holds such, such a, a, a position that we don't have to bow to you. Boy, do you know who you are? Come on, tell somebody. You get a little beside yourself. Then there's some of you, God has told you what, what he was going to do and how he was going to use you. And you end up beside yourself. You think you all that. Not knowing that you're called to be used for his glory. Amen. And so the character building. Tell somebody the character building. The character building that God has to take us through is something that we may not know. We may not understand. Some of us, we have been put in places that we never would have gone ourselves. There's some situations and circumstances that we have to be attentive to because God's bringing us to places that we don't want to go, but they're meant to humble us because of the prideful spirit that we have. doesn't mean that something's wrong with you, but your character has to be forged by the spirit. Your character has to come in line with what God's calling for. Tell somebody, I'm not there yet. Boy, it got quiet with that one, Pastor Tom. Nobody wants to agree with that. Just tell your neighbor I'm ready. Whew. Joseph is one of those things that we have to look at. Because what's happening with Joseph, you ever look and say, man, this was hard. Why did he have to go through so many places? No, nobody? Can I just say to you, you ever rode the bus, Greyhound, Anybody put on a great hand? And you know where your destination was. There were a whole lot of people that got on the great hand. Might have been Amtrak. Yeah, you ever And you know what's amazing is that you have one destination that you're concerned about, and that's the place you're going. And there's a whole lot of people that get on on the same bus or the same train that you're on. You're here, on. And they keep making stops. <laughs> Pastor Dollar, I was going to Washington. And it was supposed to take two days. I said, man, we can make it in one day if they stop making all these stops. And don't you know everybody else has a destination that they're supposed to go to as well. And we're all on the same, you know, on the same line happen to be on the same train or the same bus. Spiritually, many of us are going to the same place. We don't know it. You know, my destination is a little further out than yours may be, Brother Jack. You may get the chance to get off a little sooner than that. But one of the things we have to understand is that we're riding this place that God is using us in the same vein to work some things out. Why are we together? Why are we together? Why... Why are we together? You ever look at your family and just wish that God had given you another family? Maybe just take some members away. Come on now. Nobody's ever been in that place. You just think that if we get rid of one member, everything will be fine. You might be that member. They won't get out. 
Glory to God. But but no, seriously, have you ever looked at it and thought, man, I'd been better off, I'd have been born with this or that. Have you ever thought that? Well, God knew what you were, were, were destined for. He knew where He was taking you. He knew where He was calling you to. And God's been speaking. And I don't know who this is for this morning, but the Spirit of God has said, I'm calling you to deeper places. I'm calling you to a deeper place in me. But I've got to take you through these places. There's stops that have to be made that you don't want to stop at. You wouldn't stop at. But it's necessary to go through here. And it's all because of preferential treatment. Some people at, at the next stop, they may be people that annoy you. You ever get on a place, you don't ever have to be in a place where you have to sit Someone sits next to you and you've already decided all I want to do is read or all I want to do is sleep. All I want to do is just think. And the person that sits next to you is a talker. <laughs> you ever had that? Yes. Not only are they a talker, but they're the most friendliest person in the world. They're friendly. They're outgoing. They just love life. They're excited. And it seems like nothing has ever been where they've had any, you know, had a difficult day because they're just so happy. And you don't want to talk. You ever been there? Mm -hmm. Usually that's because there's something that God's working out in you that's necessary that you and I need to come out of our place. You ever like to get comfortable? Come on now. Yes. I just want to be comfortable. I just want to be left alone. Just don't want to be bothered. You ever feel like you're just miserable? You ever been miserable? And you want to be left alone? alone because you're miserable? Mm -hmm. you, you ever had a bad, a bad, come on now, nobody yes. has. Yes. I mean, you ever had a bad moment, a bad day, I just want you to lose your hair. That's that word, get out of my face. And there's somebody that gets in your face because God's giving you preferential treatment. And they're so nice. You know, that's what's really messing it up because they're so nice. And they get right in your face. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you, God is bringing some things to you that's right up close and personal. And they're necessary because of what He's doing in you. It's really about character. You know, say, so we haven't made it to our destination. We haven't made it to our spot. But the purpose for this is that God is doing something in you so that when you stand before the places, in the places that God is calling to, that you will be the man or woman that you call it. Amen. Ugh. Tell my neighbor I want to get there. I just want to get to my destination. Anybody? Just want to get to your destination. Want to hurry up and get there. I want to tell you, some of you are going to have to slow down. Because what's in your character is called impatience. And because you want to hurry up and get there, you want to get through, you want to get to the other side. God said we got to slow you down. Anybody here like to drive fast? Yes. <laughs> People like to drive fast. You know, sometimes you get like that. If you just want to just get there in a hurry. Glory to God. Doesn't matter that other people. But I, I love it because sometimes when I'm watching, you know, on the highway, when we're watching, uh, I watch people that just... They just keep weaving in and out of yeah. traffic. Yeah. You, know, you ever see them just weaving yeah. in and out of traffic? Yeah. They, they can't stay in one lane. You know, and, and you know, it's like kind of like this. You know, you ever been in that in, 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 in the carpool lane, and the car in front of you has thirty spaces in front of it. You ever had one of those? So you have to get out of the lane, accelerate, pass them up, and try to impact the road and get those thirty spaces back. You ever had that? And ultimately, well, by the time you slow down and do all that, the person gets out of the lane, and you somehow get slowed down, and they, they, they just want to speed up all at once and get in front of you. Mm -hmm. Now, because of your impatience, you're upset, so you got to get out of it. Can I tell you, some of us have been so impatient about getting to the place that God has for us, we don't know what He's trying to put in us. You don't, know, you don't understand what He has to take out of you so that when you arrive in that place, you'll be who you're supposed to be. What's it like to get to a place? i got to hurry, guys. I want to hurry. Is this helping anybody yet? Yes. What I really want you to see, what God was really showing me, He said, listen, 
He says, listen, he said, what is, what's missed is when I first speak, I already know the end from the beginning. Amen. <laughs> he said, the moment I spoke to Joseph, I knew he was going to Egypt. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter he was going to have stops in a pit. It didn't matter if he was going to stop in prison. It didn't matter if he was going to Potiphar's house. I knew he, he was going to Egypt. So, well, God, how do you know? He says, because I'm Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. He says, I've already got it predestined. I've already got it mapped out. He says, I've already got your stops laid out. <laughs> wow. But it's not just about, it's not just about the trip. He said, but along the journey, there's some things I have to take out of you. So that when you arrive, in the place that I'm calling to. You'll be able to do what I'm calling. That I will be glorified. Can you imagine? Joseph would have arrived. The same person that he started out to be. The Bible tells us. The Bible tells us that he recognized his brothers. His brothers didn't recognize him. Could you imagine? Pastor Thomas, he was still filled with the same hate. Over the sense of what he'd gone through. If he was filled with the same kind of colorful stories that he had in the beginning. You know what he'd been trying to do? Come on, somebody. Be real. Have you ever wanted to get back at somebody because of what they did to you? I can't wait till I'm up. <laughs> you ever been there? Yeah. I want to tell you something. God wants to take some things out of you. There's some people that he's brought in, some people that have done some things to you. But God said, I want you to be humbled by this place. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody, we got to learn about forgiveness along this route. Right. Mm -hmm. How do you learn about forgiveness? You have to be, be in a place where you're going to have to forgive some good people. Whew. You'll never learn it without going through some things. Mm -hmm. There are some specific things that God's bringing forth in your character. There are people that are called... Because of the preferential treatment that God is giving you, there are people that he's going to bring that don't really like you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Can you imagine God bringing somebody in your life, Sister Linda, that's going to make you pray? Anybody been saying, I want to get closer to God? The Father said he'd already spoken about how you were going to walk with him. But you didn't know that because of the preferential treatment of God, he was going to bring somebody in your life that would annoy you so much. Yes. Somebody that would be, you know, can I say this? Not everybody's going to be for you. And there are people that God has brought into your life that are not supposed to be for you. They're supposed to make you come closer to God. Amen. Amen. You're going to learn about forgiveness. You're going to learn about love. You're going to learn what it's like to reach out and share with people like you've never been before because of the preferential treatment of God in your life. <sighs> Tell somebody I'm walking in the fog. <laughs> Favor of God. <laughs> There's things that you don't get from the beginning when God spoke. He already knew what the end would bring. You and I want to get to the end. We want to get to our destination. God said there's other people that you're going to ride with. That you're going to help them get where they're going. And they're going to help you. Some of them we're not going to like, Brother Jack. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Not everybody's going to like me. My great personality. All my jokes. Everybody's not going to like me, Pastor Thelma. And God says I'm calling you to a place to learn how to love them. Some of the destinations or the stops that you're about to make are going to help you love people that are unlovable. Man, it would be good to just get off. Tell somebody I get off and to catch another train. Mm -hmm. You ever just want to get away from somebody and want to go somewhere else? Come on, be real. Yeah. Yes. Huh? Yes. Can I just be real with you for a second? Sometimes, and I love to go back to families. Sometimes in your family, you have family members you don't want to get along with. Or they make it hard to get along with. Anybody? Yes. And you decide to quit your family. I'm no longer a part. You ever, you ever decided for a while you would just stay away from your own family? How? God has to deal with some things in all of us. 
I want to tell you, I want you just to be understanding in this place. There's some things that God is doing in you, you don't understand. But the preferential treatment of God is necessary because he was about to do in you. Whew, so much fun. We see Joseph. We see Joseph. We see Joseph. And we have the inside report on Joseph. Can I tell you? There's an insight for each of you. Uh, can I just be honest? Sometimes we look good at the social setting, at the, at the most esteemed time. Let me say it like this, Pastor Thomas. We look good coming to church. We're all dressed up. We look real spiritual. But God sees what's on the inside of you. And because of what God is doing in you, it's necessary. Can I just tell you like this? It's necessary to get those things out of can, can I just say it like this? I want to, I, I'm trying to, to talk in a way that you can hear and it makes sense. You ever get a meal where it's something that you don't like? You know, you ever get a salad, for instance? You, anybody here love olives? Yeah, yeah. I love olives. And somebody else over there is saying, I don't like olives. Anybody like croutons? Yes. Onions? Yes. So you got all these things that you like. Well, well I already heard somebody say they didn't like olives. <coughs> so you know what happens when you get those olives? And they, you know, because it just seems like the thing that you don't like, they just pour, uh, you know, some extra. Take them out. Throw, throw a little, what did somebody say? Take them out. You start picking them out. Can I tell you, God's picking some things out of your life because it's not meant to be. Amen. 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 He's taking you through some places that you don't want to go. Yes, he is. I don't want to go there. But there's where your olives are. There's some things in your life that have to be picked out. And can we be real just for a second? Anybody have anger issues? Yes. That's not my turn my back because I don't want to see anybody. Eh? You know, so you just ask them, do they have anger issues? And of course they say, I ain't got no anger. Got anger issues. Anybody has a sense of being prideful? Anybody got pride issues? See, nobody wants to acknowledge when they got pride issues. A lot of times we don't even know. Anybody here like to be right? All the time? Like that last word? Come on, y'all now. Now they look like, oh, I'm going to say I'm going to get me on that. But God knows it's there. And because it's there, he has to pull it out. Just like those olives or onions or croutons, whatever it is, has to be pulled out because of where God's taking you. You may think that you are all that, and as they say, a bag of chips. You may think that you're, you're, you're God's gift to the world, but there's things that have to be pulled out of you. And then, of course, it's God making you over. Tell somebody he's making me over. He's making me over. And I want to get this. I'm really getting very close. We want to get close because I want to show you something. God began to show me. He says, well, Joseph, at the very beginning, when I spoke to Joseph, when I gave him the dream, I knew what Joseph had to go through. Every place, every stop that Joseph made, there was something that God had to take out. In mm. every place that Joseph went, you say, wow, you see some other things happen. But it's not just about Joseph. God is doing something in everybody. He had to do something in Reuben. Reuben was the one that, that you know, that instead of his brothers killing him, man, how ruthless can we be? Mm -hmm. Now, you know, can I tell you this? Some of you have a ruthless nature. Some of you are snipers and assassins and you don't even realize it. Some of your words are just like an assassin's bullet. And they go straight to the heart of people. God says, I have to pull that out of you. Some of you are just snipers. Just looking for the right moment to get them. Now watch that movie where a guy waited all day long for two people to line up in his sight so he could get them both. And he was a sniper. And an assassin. Some of our words are like that. 
God says, I'm working on you because of the way you talk and the way you speak to people. I have to go through and I have things I got to pull out, but I got to line it up at the right moment to take it out. So this is places you're going. Tell somebody I'm going. We started out happy. We'll end happy. Is that all right? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear these things. Nobody wants to, to hear this. It's like, like I, I love the story of Joseph. I like him in the end. But what God says, listen, I know the end from the beginning. He says, you can see what's taking place with Joseph. But I want you to understand every stop, there's something that I'm doing inside of Joseph. And Joseph gets to make choices. Tell somebody we get to make choices. We choose, we choose to come closer to God. Or we choose to allow our circumstances and situations to get the better of us. We can choose to hear and follow by the Spirit. Or we can choose to keep following our emotions, our will, and our way. Tell somebody, God says, literally, the Spirit of God is calling your character and conduct to be bring you to the place of becoming more like Christ. Wow. I want to get to the palace. I want to get to the place that I can run things by the Spirit. That's no, there's no point in getting there and be, not being humble. There's no place in getting there and still having pride. There's no place, in, no, time, no reason to get to the place that God is calling to you and you still have this other stuff on the inside of you. Some of us don't even know how to work one with another. We don't know how to talk one to another. Yet we believe that we're going places. I want to tell you, you're going, you're going to make some stops. And along those stops, there's going to be some things that God has to take out. Mm -hmm. may not be to the things that you thought. But before you get to your journey, get to, excuse me, further along your journey or your destination, God has to do some things in you. Can I say to you today, preferential treatment. Come on, wave your hand and say preferential treatment. Preferential treatment. So Father, I'm thanking you. Father, I'm thanking you. Father, I'm thanking you. For preferential treatment. For preferential treatment. Now that sounded good when we say, you know, God giving us favor. I want to tell you something about the favor of God again so that you understand this. Mary, Mary was given favor. But because Mary had favor, it didn't mean that she didn't have problems. Mary was given favor. It didn't mean that she didn't have to go through some things. God has to prepare you in order to walk through the places that he can bring you to. God's going to bless you over and above anything that you can ask or think of. But he has to prepare you for where he's taking you. He's looking for a man or woman that will remain humble. That will stay in a place that no matter what, what others will hear and see is God. How does that happen? How does that happen? We have to be forged by the Spirit. Well, how does the Spirit of God take us? Many of us just believe that God is just going to come down and just, just suddenly just cause me to be made into the man or woman that I need to be. Some of us really believe that if I just get more understanding of the Word, it's going to change me. I want to tell you this. Just because you get information, it doesn't change you. The only thing that's going to change is that you have information. You know, kind of, kind of do like this. It's kind of like this. You're either going to be a man or woman whose heart, whose heart has been so broken by the things of God that you walk and fall and flow by the Spirit, or you just be a devil with a lot of information. Can I just be real with you? We have a lot of devils in church. That's hard and harsh. Well, why are you calling them devils? Because as long as we choose to do it our way, and do it according to what makes us feel good. We're not doing what the Spirit of God is calling for. Can I tell you? You're going to have to bow. You're going to have to bend. You're going to have to yield and allow the Holy Spirit to have his way. What I'm saying. God says, yes, I'm taking my people to higher heights and deeper depths. But I have to take them through these places. Everybody sees the place that they want to make it to. But they don't know where they have to go. And you're hearing this word today. And you recognize. Can I just say this? 
if you recognize there's some things inside of you that need attending to. Then I want you to come to the altar. Why don't you come with me this morning? Let's just pray. Let's just submit. Let's just yield. It's not the same thing. Maybe you stay at your seat, but let's just do something that's different. Can I just be real with you? I believe this time for God to have a way in us. You know, it's like every day, every time, you know, some things. How often do you go to the doctor? Anybody go for a checkup? Yes. You know, sometimes do you know that something's wrong but you don't want to go? You ever stay away from your doctor because, you know, I can treat it myself? Spiritually, God's saying that he wants to examine you. Even to this end, he's calling you to a place of a self-examination. And when you recognize there's things that are on the inside that are not conducive to the Spirit of God, surely we need to let him deal with it. I don't know about you, but I'm not right all the time. There's some things I recognize that God is yet doing. But I also have to make the choice to yield. If you're in that place and you know you need to yield to the Spirit of God, if you're in that place that you know there's this place in me. You, anybody get get upset real easily? Some of you missing your peace? Don't walk in your peace? There may be some things that are happening in your, your journey, and I just got to be real with you. What's happening in your journey is necessary for your final destination. Say, so God, what is it? Why is it so hard? Tell somebody where I'm going. Where I'm going. If you're standing in this place today, I'll pray for the Facebook folks and I'll just move on. And does everybody here seem like they're all right? Glory to God. Is that right? <laughs> but if you're in this house, I, I'm like to say, if we're in this place and we're hearing, ah, glory to God, and we're hearing, I want to tell you the Lord wants to take you higher. Tell somebody wants to take you higher. Take you higher. Father, we thank you for those of you who are hearing and receiving on today. I pray that you leave with a message that the Spirit of God is speaking into your spirit yeah. that causes you to be altered forever, Amen. never going back to that same old place. Mm -hmm. But I pray that the Spirit of God will move you, promote you, take you to a different place in Him. Recognize sometimes we see people as the problem, but it's not the people, but the problem that we see existing in us. God has to remove the problem, not the people. So, Father, we thank you for what you're going to do and how you see fit to do it. I thank you for blessing us and taking us to a new height, a new dimension, and giving us a new direction by your Spirit. So I thank you for what you do and how you do it. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank and praise you for it.